From the outside, Zenith football helmets look like any other helmet on the market, but the technology inside sets Zenith apart. A lot of the foam products that are out there, they're very stiff, very rigid. They really don't displace energy as well as our air cell. These are the air cells Zenith president Chuck Huggins is talking about. Because of them, Huggins says, players in Zenith helmets have less recoil when their heads are hit and less risk of brain injury. And that's not the only thing Zenith does differently. Designer Kyle Lampson showed me this traditional helmet as a contrast. All of these foam parts are actually attached to the shell itself. So there's no movement between the shell and the foam parts of this. So when a player gets hit, the entire helmet is going to move as one piece. But in a Zenith, the cushioned interior, which they call the bonnet, and the hard shell don't move in tandem. When the player gets hit in our helmet, the helmet is able to move a little bit independently of the head um, with the goal of helping to reduce rotational impacts that are imparted onto the head and the brain. What's more, Zenith's chin strap links to this piece that cradles the base of the skull, providing better fit and extra protection. Zenith was founded less than a decade ago, but a share of the football helmet market is 9% and growing. And Zenith isn't the only local company using new technologies to tackle concussions. Pretty much what it is, it's a soft sensing skull cap. It's measuring the energy that's delivered to the head um, using an accelerometer that measures linear acceleration and a gyroscope that measures rotational acceleration. The Reebok Checklight is a joint venture of Reebok and MC10, a Cambridge-based wearable electronics firm. It's worn close to the skull and instantly signals when the head is struck, yellow for significant impacts and red for serious hits. We're finding that a lot of athletes in the heat of a game, they don't want to raise their hand to indicate that they've sustained a hit. And especially with young athletes, they may not even know how to best articulate what's just happened to them. So a light really takes the burden off of the athlete to have to report those symptoms in real time. Of course, the search for new anti-concussion technologies isn't restricted to Massachusetts. At the University of Notre Dame, researchers are working on a concussion diagnosing app that analyzes users' speech. House. So during the test, the athlete speaks into a microphone on a tablet device and the uh, speech is analyzed for acoustic features. Meanwhile, new products like the Guardian Cap, which straps to the outside of football helmets, and the Full 90, a padded headband for soccer players, take a somewhat lower-tech approach. Of course, none of these eliminates risk. When it comes to the laws of physics, innovation has its limits. And Adam Riley is here. Well, you said earlier in the piece, uh, the NFL has put out this $10 million incentive for right. companies to come up. This is independent of these people. They've already done it. But should they be applauded for that, or are they just trying to bury this whole thing? you got to see the, uh, the $10 million award or incentives that they're offering um, in connection with the, I think, $765 million settlement they reached with players who accused yeah. them of... Uh, of not addressing this problem adequately in the past. So I tend to be a little cynical with the NFL's offering to it more uh, as an attempt at damage control. There's actually been some friction between Zenith, the company that we mentioned that uh, is based in Lowell and puts their helmets together in Tewksbury. Um, they were very critical of the NFL's testing protocol for helmets because in some testing the NFL did, the Zenith helmets didn't score as well as they thought they should. In some other testing done independently at Virginia Tech, the Zenith helmets got, uh, I think, a five-star rating, the best possible rating. You could make an argument, I'm not trying to be too much of a homer here for a hometown company, but you could make an argument that if the NFL wanted a safer helmet, they would have their players embracing the Zenith helmet right now more than they are. Mm. Um, so it's hard not to be a little cynical. All right, the Reebok thing was a little more puzzling to me. It's almost like a headband or a skull cap, right. and you wear it underneath the helmet? You can wear it underneath the helmet, or you can wear it, if you were, say, a soccer player, you could wear it while you were playing your I sport. See. And th I think what's most interesting to me about this technology is the idea that People can't be trusted to report their own symptoms. This is something that we heard uh, when we talked with that mm. uh, neuropsychologist yesterday, Neil McGrath. He made the same point. One of the good things about baseline testing is people will be more honest with a computer than they are with uh, a physician. But the idea is that if there's a, a nasty hit that's taken, everyone can see it. Everyone on the sidelines, coaches, parents, yeah. athletic trainers, other players, and someone will come out uh, more readily than they might if they were left to say, you know, I don't feel good. I have to stop. Well, playing. all week we've been working on these series. On the series, as you know, we've been soliciting comments from viewers, and here's one that we just got. A viewer says, I am always floored by the cavalier attitude students have about keeping their heads safe during any sporting or athletic play. I almost wish children could meet disabled adults who suffered brain injuries as children in order to truly understand 
what's at stake. What really struck me about this comment, two things. The woman who wrote it, uh, as I recall, said that she had a sibling who'd been injured seriously, uh, got a serious brain injury as a child, I think in a biking accident. So she's speaking from pers difficult personal experience. But I think that her point needs to be augmented by saying it's really up to the parents because when you're a kid or when you're a teenager, you, you could see someone who suffered a terrible brain injury and you just don't think it's going to happen to you. You think you're immortal. You think that you're you know, never going to be seriously hurt. So I feel like it's really parents probably who need to see, okay, here's a football player mm -hmm. who is still struggling with something that happened 20 years ago or a soccer player or whatever. And then they're the ones who need to exercise control over their children. It's All right. Be well, nice job, Anna. And it's good to know that that technology is in the pipeline. It's cool stuff.